Well, hello everybody and welcome back to uh, our second day of parametric equations. Yesterday we took care of all the, the little rinky-dink details of introducing you to how a parametric behaves and the fact that uh, uh, t is our called our parameter or independent variable and then both now x and y are dependent variables. So, uh, today we're going to start talking about the calculus elements of parametrics and we're going to kind of cover a hodgepodge of things. We're going to talk about our first derivatives, our second derivatives, and also even get into arc length and so forth. So uh, the, our first discussion, we want to start talking about slope. And uh, the picture I've imported here, you see uh, two horizontal tangent, or I'm sorry, one horizontal tangent line, two vertical tangent lines. Uh, that'll be, that'll pertain to example number three today when we try to find those. But before we can even do that, I just want to talk about a very basic tangent line, uh, a generic one, and how we're going to find the slope of any specific point right here. And finding the slope of that point we're going to have a similar discussion than we had with respect to polars. The only way to measure slope is the ratio of the curve's rise as it relates to its run. And the only way to measure rise is the change in your vertical position. And the only way to measure run is the change in your horizontal position. So, for instance, uh, dx dt by itself only measures the rate at which the horizontal position is changing. Um, and that might be worth jotting down here a little bit. Uh, so let's just remind ourselves, dx dt is the rate at which the horizontal position is changing. Okay, and then similarly speaking, dy dt is, all that measures is the rate at which the curve's vertical position is changing. So neither one of them by themselves measures slope. The only way to measure slope is to calculate dy with respect to x. Now in this case we're going to say that the derivative of y with respect to t divided by dx dt. So very similar to the polar and so dy dt divided by dx dt is the way that we're going to measure the slope of a parametric. Uh, very basic and once you see an example I think you're going to find out that it is a piece of cake. Now we want to have a uh, quick discussion about the second derivative of a parametric function and it's not as simple as it may seem like it should be on the surface but first of all if we want the first derivative to always measure slope then we also want the second derivative to always measure concavity regardless of whether we're in rectangular polar or parametric mode and so our key here is to remind ourselves that concavity is the rate at which the first derivative is changing with respect to x, okay? And that definition holds true regardless of what mode we're, t we're, we're in. So if we want to take the second derivative, it's the, okay, let's say it's the rate at which the first derivative is changing with respect to x. So this is how I would write it. And the fact that I have an x out here corresponds to the fact that it's, you know, changing with respect to x. Now, we're going to rewrite this and say, the derivative with respect to x of, and we're going to say our numerator is really dy dt, and our denominator is really dx dt. Okay, so we're building, we're building. However, my next move is a very, very subtle, sneaky move, and I'm going to do my best to explain it, but if, you know, if, if we don't quite pick up on it here, it's not the end of the world, we still should be able to, you know, do the problems that the AP throws at us, but what I want to do here is we're going to rewrite what I just wrote. We've got our dx dt on the bottom like we did earlier, but I want you to consider the numerator to look like this with a dy dx on the inside. So algebraically speaking, I want to ask you, you know, is it a legal move? Is what I had up here, is this rascal equivalent to the way I rewrote it? And basically, if you focus and let's see, I'm going to change colors. Look at this portion right here. All I did is I swapped the two denominators, and of course if you're multiplying two fractions and you, you swap their respective denominators, the, the product uh, is still going to be the same when you're all done. So algebraically speaking, it appears to be a legal move, and now we just need to decipher it. See, what we have here now in these square brackets, dy dx, that's something you already calculated. You already have the first derivative done. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of the first derivative with respect to t, which is going to be a piece of cake you'll see, and then you're going to divide that by dx dt, which again is something you already calculated in order to find the first derivative in the first place. So anyway, here's what I need you to do. Let's put a box around this crazy formula right here, and we'll practice using it a couple of times. And it's certainly one of the more obscure formulas we've seen, but uh, it's, it's not going to be too hard to perform. 
And then real quickly, before we jump into our examples, we need to have a brief discussion about arc length, uh, a.k.a. total distance traveled. And the reason um, these two phrases mean the same thing all of a sudden in parametrics is just think of one of those curves and it's we always said that a parametric curve represents some particle traveling um, in the xy coordinate plane and so the length of an arc is also uh, means the same thing as the total distance traveled by that particle that the parametric is representing and so you could see the question asked in one of these two ways now basically arc length of any curve is we're taking the curve over a finite interval and we're breaking it into an infinite number of tiny line segments and then we try to you know, maybe our curve looks like that, and we said, you know what, we're going we're gonna to pick one little section, and we're going to break it into a right triangle, and we said, well, the length of the hypotenuse is very close to the length of the curve over that interval, and of course, we want the interval to be infinitely small, and we said, well, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and, and so forth, um, but let's say a is the base, and b was the height, a is the change in x, b is the change in y, so I think once I show you the formula here, it's going to You'll kind of see where it comes from. Of course, you'd be taking the square root of both sides to solve for c. So here's what we're going to say for the arc length formula. We could say our length here in parametric is the integral from a to b. That's the adding up of an infinite number of tiny line segments. My a is going to be dx dt. That's the infinitely small change in x with respect to time squared plus dy dt, the infinitely small change in y with respect to time and then that entire integral is going to be with respect to t so very very similar to you know a couple of the other arc length formulas again let me put a big p in front of this one so that's parametric and uh, wouldn't be a bad idea i'm going to write down the other two arc length formulas just to compare them you certainly can hit the pause button and see if you recall what's the rectangular version of arc length and what's the polar version whoops i guess p o l we'll put a little p a r there for parametric um, to see if you remember these. So here's the other two formulas, and just notationally speaking, really focus on little details, you know, such as what you finish with. Rectangulars with respect to x, polars with respect to theta, and of course parametrics with respect to t. So make sure you have the appropriate markings at the end. Um, other than that, they're all very, very similar, um, and I hope we can keep them straight. Well, now it's time to take a look at our first example, and we're going to try to take all the gibberish I just threw at you in the last three slides, kind of sort it out, make some sense of it, and, and uh, certainly a little practice will clear these uh, concepts up. I want to take the parametric equation, x equals 2 radical t, and y equals 3t squared minus 2t, and I want to find the first derivative, which is dy dx, and then the second derivative here. Uh, notationally, we're going to You've, you've seen this before. That's the second derivative of y with respect to x here. So we're looking at the slope and the concavity of this parametric equation. So part a, as far as the slope, we're just going to recall that dy dx is really the derivative of y with respect to t divided by the derivative of x with respect to t. Um, let's see, my numerator is going to be 6t minus 2. My denominator is going to be t to the negative 1 half power. Now as I clean that rascal up, I, uh, I'm going to make like a beaver, I'm going to split, and I'm uh, just subtracting the respective exponents. So let's see, I got a, a 1 minus a negative 1 half, that's actually going to give me t to the 3 halves, minus 2t to the negative 1 half. So right there is your first derivative, and if you needed the slope at any specific moment of t, you could simply plug it into that equation right there. All right, now for the more challenging one of the two, we'll call this part B. The second derivative, just recall your formula. The first thing, it's going to be the derivative with respect to t of the first derivative, okay? And then we're going to divide that by dx dt. So look at this. Everything, you know, most of this is something you already have. We already have dy dx. That was up here, okay? And we already calculated dx dt. So the only thing we really need to do now is take the derivative of our first derivative with respect to t. So 3 halves times 6 is going to give me 9. The new exponent will be 1 half. Uh, let's see, plus 1t to the negative 3 halves. And now I'm just going to simply divide that by the dx dt that we calculated earlier, and that was t to the negative 1 half. All right, now we're just going to do a little bit of cleanup. We'll make like a beaver here. Uh, let's see, 9, um, if I subtract those exponents, I'm going to get positive 1. 
and then plus, and if I subtract those exponents, I think I'm going to get, let's see, um, is that negative 1, I believe? Whoops, 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 hold on, hold on. Hopefully you caught this a little earlier. Let's backtrack a little bit. We're going to tidy up one of my little mistakes. Let's see here. This exponent right back here should have been a positive one half because if it was negative in the denominator, it should have been positive in the numerator. So then that means this derivative is still going to be negative t to the negative one half. Okay, sorry about this. We'll get this fixed up here. And then when I divide those two exponents, I'm just going to get a one there. So let's say the second derivative is straight up nine t minus one. Let's carry that down. So hopefully you can make some sense out of that. Again, I screwed up this exponent right back here, and then we'll just kind of trace that, fix all the way through the problem. Okay, example number two, given the parametric equations, x equals four cosine of t and y equals three sine of t. Um, First of all, your expectations are you're probably expecting some kind of circular elliptical behavior because of the example we saw at the end of our notes yesterday, and you would be correct to expect that. But they're not asking us to graph it. They're just wanting us to write the equation of a tangent line to the curve at the point where t equals 3 pi over 4. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to calculate um, the uh, appropriate x-coordinate, the appropriate y-coordinate, and then, of course, the slope. So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, the x and the y-coordinate out of the way. Uh, first of all, the x-coordinate is going to be 4 times the cosine of 3 pi over 4. Uh, I believe that's in the second quadrant, so we're going to have a negative, uh, negative radical 2 over 2, which is going to be negative 2 radical 2. Our y-coordinate will be 3 times the sine of 3 pi over 4 which is going to be 3 times positive radical 2 over 2. So we'll just say 3 radical 2 over 2. So now that I've got those two values, the only thing that's missing now is my slope. And we're going to say it's the derivative of y with respect to t divided by the derivative of x with respect to t. And so the derivative of y turns out to be 3 cosine of t. Derivative of x is negative 4 sine of t. And then we're just going to evaluate those at 3 pi over 4. So I think I've got 3 times negative radical 2 over 2. And then we've got negative 4 times positive radical 2 over 2. This is quite a feisty one. Uh, I do think we're going to get a negative divided by a negative. Let's see, 3 radical 2 over 2 divided by... 2 radical 2, both, both were negative, so they turned out to be positive. Let's see, if I call that over 1, and always going to multiply by that reciprocal. So we get the radical 2's to cancel out. So I think we just ended up with 3 fourths as the slope here. Again, if I screwed up any of my arithmetic there, you give me a holler in class tomorrow and we'll get her fixed up. But anyway, let's put it all together now. I think my tangent line is going to look like this. I've got y minus 3 radical 2 over 2 equals 3 fourths and in quantity x plus 2 radical 2. And that's going to be the equation of my tangent line. Our third example, uh, as we referred to earlier in this, the uh, lesson today, we're going to talk about horizontal and vertical tangencies and the curves are, let's do x equals t squared plus t and y equals t squared minus 3t plus 5. Now, before we dive into these two examples spe um, specifically, let's just generally say that um, in order to have a horizontal tangent line, what has to happen, and this is very much like polars, we're going to say that the numerator dy dt has to equal 0, and then make a little side note, okay? While dy dt is equal to 0, dx dt cannot be 0, okay? Um, and vice versa, how do you find a vertical tangent line? Well, we want the denominator to be equal to 0, therefore the slope is undefined. And while dx dt is equal to 0, we're going to make sure that dy dt cannot be 0. And uh, somewhere, one of these mornings in Good Morning Math, we're going to look at an old free response question where these two rules here became a monster issue. Um, and uh, so I'll just leave it at that, and that problem will probably sneak up on us at some point. But anyway, so let's find horizontals first of all. And if we want our horizontal tangencies... We'll do all the horizontal work in orange. 
Okay, we want to set our derivative of y with respect to t equal to 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to say 2t minus 3 has got to be 0. In other words, t is going to be equal to 3 halves. Now the other thing is in, we're just going to make sure that dx dt was not equal to 0 at that moment. So dx dt would have actually been 2t plus 1. And you'll notice if you evaluate that at 3 halves, you certainly won't get zero. So that's a good thing. We'll put a little smiley face there. So we'll say right here, whenever t equals three halves, you'll get a horizontal tangent line. All right, we'll switch colors here. We'll do all of our vertical tangent line work in green here. We're going to say that the derivative of x with respect to t has got to be zero. We already kind of mentioned uh, dx dt is 2t plus 1. So whenever t is equal to negative 1 half, uh, we'll have a vertical tangent line, and then we just want to make sure that dy dt was not equal to 0. And let's see, dy dt was 2t minus 3, and I think you'd agree if we substituted that negative 1 half into there, we would not get 0. So again, happy face right there. So there's just one little trick here that we have to acknowledge before we say we're done. Okay, it kind of feels like we're done, but we're not quite. I want you to take a look at the directions here. They snuck a very sneaky word in here. They said find all points. Okay, they didn't ask us to just find the values of t. So what I've got to do for each of those respective parts is I've got to plug those t values back into these respective equations and, and figure out the actual points. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So what I'm going to do here for t equals 3 halves is I'm going to plug that back into x equals t squared plus t, and I got 15 fourths for the x-coordinate. And then I'm going to plug the 3 halves back into the y equals t squared minus 3t plus 5, and I got 11 fourths. So there's the x and the y-coordinate of the point when the slope will be 0, a.k.a. having a horizontal tangent line. Now we'll just repeat that process again. I'm going to take t equals negative 1 half, plug it in. I got negative 1 fourth for the x-coordinate, and I got 27 fourths for the y-coordinate, and that's the x and y-coordinate of the point with a vertical tangent line curve. Well, the good news is we saved the easiest one for last. Uh, we're going to do a quick example on arc length, and all they want us to do is set up an integral expression. They're not asking us to evaluate or anything. Uh, they want x equals t squared plus 1, and we'll talk about y equals 4t cubed minus 1 over the interval from 0 to positive 1. All right. Uh, so just to recall, our, our arc length formula said we want the integral from a to b. We want the change in x to be squared. We want the change in y to be squared. And I think it's the one thing you want to appreciate here is that this formula came from the Pythagorean theorem, one of the more basic things we ever learned back in middle school, believe it or not. So anyway, as we plug things in, we'll say the integral from 0 to 1. The change in x, uh, derivative of x here would be 2t. And then the derivative of y would be 12t squared with respect to t. And then um, just make sure there's a dt at the end of these. And they may clean it up just a little bit, but there's really not much you can do here. I've got 4t squared plus 144t to the fourth. And that's it. That's all they're asking for. They just wanted an integral expression to represent the length of the curve from 0 to 1. And now I just want to take a moment here to kind of recap all the different phases we covered. We kind of, like I said, it was a hodgepodge. The first thing we did is we said how dy dt divided by dx dt, that's going to measure your slope. That's going to be your first derivative. Uh, we talked about the how to find concavity, and that's going to be the derivative with respect to t of your first derivative. And then we're going to divide that whole expression by dx dt, and that's how we're going to measure concavity. And then the third thing we talked about was arc length. And again, we just put that formula on this slide above, so hopefully that's fresh in your mind. Those are the three random things we hit on today, kind of all over the place, but uh, we just didn't have time to devote a day to each one of those. And I thought they were simple enough that we didn't have to. So hopefully that makes sense. We'll get some more practice in tomorrow, and we'll be ready to move on.